We're briefly heading down from the mountain over to some hot springs. Definitely one of the best things about hanging around volcanoes. Yeah, there's the hot springs. We just went by and Danny talked to the people at Thermales de Luis. And I think it's a little bit too pricey for us. It would be 50,000 pesos each. So we're just gonna check out the next one and see what that one's like. I mean, maybe we'll come back to this one. The next one also has camping that we're able to do. So that'll be pretty cool. And we'll see how much it costs. I think it's about half as much. Oh, the normal commute. Swimsuits on! Yeah. The gate was actually closed whenever we got here. Denny honked the horn and a guy came out. He said we can camp on Hot Spring for 50,000 pesos for the both of us, which is half as much as the other place. It's not like a crazy fancy place, but I mean, a Hot Spring to ourselves. <laughs> That'll do. Ooh. What? What do you think? Oh god, is it not hot? Oh, um, it's not that hot. You guys think Emily should come in? Tell Emily to come in. I'm coming, I'm coming. Oh, she's coming, she says, but actually yeah, speak louder than words. Which is it's funny. pretty hot. It's, I mean, it's compared pretty hot. to the last place, so it's not hot. Yeah, but if you do compare it to the last place, here would be 25 each, including spending the night. Yeah. Well, there we spent the night for free, just right outside, so. Yeah, but we spent 65 each. It was each. 65 each, plus parking of the vehicle. Ugh. So that was about three times more. He said you can wake up in the hot tub if you want. Well, you guys know where Danny will be. <laughs> We've been to a lot of natural hot springs in the U.S. where you just kind of pull up and maybe someone just put in a tube, kind of like these tubes and siphon the water into a little pool that they made or they brought out there. Sometimes it's made out of concrete. Sometimes it's literally just a tub that someone put out there that's now full of hot water. And this really, really reminds me of one of those because we can we always used to camp at them. We would meet some really awesome friends that we still have today at these places. I think this one's even nicer because it has the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> but usually we, when we would go to these ones in Mammoth, California, we would go to the hot spring to sleep at night and then head up to the ski mountain in the morning. And the same thing happened today. We got to see snow today and we got to go to the hot spring at night. So this seems like the hot water tube coming in. And in addition to this, they had a cold water coming in that we took out. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess these ones are just empty right now, but it's just us. So I I'm think that they would fill them up on, maybe on the weekends. It doesn't look like those tubes are forever. And it looks like there's as many beers as a lot of people were here. So. <laughs> it's all yeah, good. It's natural. And the price is right. And we're alone. That was such a nice time at the hot spring and now I think we're just gonna get some work done and hang out with the little pets. We got to have a nice day today too, wandering around outside after we were done at the national park and everyone seems a little sleepy, including me. There's Mani Salas down below. Morning. Morning. So we're just waking up, enjoying the view with our coffees. We got all the animals huddled close for comfort. 
And what are we getting up to today, Emily? Yeah, we were just talking about going on a hike over to a natural hot spring right down the road. Yeah, we're definitely in hot spring country. We gotta keep hot springing. It's like right down there where you see that blue roof and it should go up a canyon from there to a really natural one, according to iOverlander. Awesome, we're kind of on an early schedule now, huh? Yeah, yeah, that's nice. All right, time to go on this hike. And we're gonna bring Gremi and Sombrita. If Graham wants. You wanna go on a walk, buddy? Let's go. Let's go on a walk, huh? <laughs> oh, he made the decision. Good boy. They're going the wrong way. Graham, let's go the other way. We're going to a hot spring. Good boy. So we're heading to a natural hot spring right now. We found it on iOverlander. It's just supposed to be right off the road uh, next to a nice waterfall. So it's gonna be a really nice little hike this morning. We decided to take some Brita and Graham. I have his backpack on just in case he doesn't wanna walk. <laughs> Let's do it, buddy. Good boy. And some Brita's really excited to have some exercise. Vamos, hombre. Yeah, it's kind of crazy to take your cat hiking. <laughs> this is the right kind of spot where there's no people and the cat's not gonna get scared of anything. Down here at the end where there's the water, he might. So <laughs> we brought the backpack, we can toss him in when the time comes. But this is a perfect spot to take a cat for a hike. Woo, had to pick up the cat for a moment because there were some dogs there. He got scared, but maybe he's good now. Good boy. Oh yeah, sometimes you gotta pick them up to go over some water. <laughs> oh Looks like you kind of have to cut this cliff here. She isn't too bad. Just gotta check it out. The dog doesn't want to go, but and they both want to eat some grass anyway. Grass gonna be easy, but yeah. Don't okay. Worry. Yeah, go check it out. It's pretty sketch. Yeah, here's the uh, the part the dog can't do right here, where you have to. Just find a good foothold. There's a lot of good handholds too. On the edge of this cliff for a moment here. And the dog don't like it. Poor girl can't figure out the way. Ooh, really gets big back here. This is like just a secret little hidden beautiful area. Wow. I'll have to send Emily over after and I'll watch the pets. Oh my goodness! Look at this, so there's a waterfall and here's the hot spring. Sombrita! How'd you get here? <laughs> she, she went up the river, I think. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at this. This is the most gorgeous hot spring. Oh my gosh, right in this canyon? This is too much! Oh, how hot is it though? Oh, not hot, hot, but it's definitely warm. Coming right out of the cliff here with an epic waterfall over there. Oh man. Hey, you made it! Yeah. Check out this hot spring. Loves a shortcut. Did 
Danny had one last hot spring dip before we settled up with Mateo, so now we'll head back up to the National Park for a free campsite before heading out of this area. Oh man, it looks like there's a little bit of a landslide over there. Yikes. Yeah, this road is pretty sketchy. We thought it was going to be pretty hard getting back up. Oh man. But definitely worth it, worth it to get to that hot spring, especially because it was so cheap. Now we're trying to head up this crazy road. It's kind of gnarly. The tires are honestly spinning a little bit. This is the roughest part. Right here? Yeah. It's a pretty rough road. Oh, another landslide. Time for a nice Van Fran break. back here to the Frelejon Valley. Beautiful view. This is one of the most beautiful little hikes I've ever done. Just surrounded by frailejones. But I'm really curious up here at the top what's gonna happen. Coming right up through the frailejones and you can do a switch back and go way up in that field. Sombrita has decided to take the path less traveled. Que hay, Sombrita? No, there's no houses. <laughs> We're heading out of Navala de Ruiz area, but Danny wants to head over to the park for one last mountain view. Oh, so finally we see the top of the mountain, Navala de Ruiz. Worth waking up early this morning. And actually the other crater that we've seen more often has snow on it too. We saw from farther back, that's the, the ranger station there for the park to head in. But you can't see this crater from going in the park. She recommended this area to see it. Wow, that was awesome to finally see it for a moment. What do you think, Emily? Oh, I'm stoked. It's even nicer when it has snow on it. It's really a beautiful mountain. Yeah. I can see the ski lines. <laughs> Just like that, it's disappearing again. But that'll do for our last sighting of Nevado de Ruiz. And now we're heading out, huh? One more step on our Nevado de Ruiz volcano tour. It's not gonna be a view. <laughs> Or a hot spring, it's something completely new. It'll be interesting to see. <laughs> yeah, this volcano has a lot of different effects. And we're gonna see some of the more harsh effects. We drove down all the way to almost sea level to a town that used to be called Armero. Center, I think, right? Yeah. So this is our meadow after the tragedy, and this is it before. Oh my god. And this is where a tragedy happened from Nevada de Ruiz. 
had exploded and destroyed this town that we're standing in the middle of. It's kind of crazy because this is so far from the volcano. But when a volcano erupts, it causes these sort of like avalanches down all the rivers. And so this is just a really unlucky place. And you can see there, this huge rock was actually washed down um, in, when this volcanic event happened. And when that rock was washed down, those lahars, these debris flows, can go 50 kilometers an hour. So this was like two hours after the eruption that the disaster occurred here. And actually the lahar went 16 kilometers past this town. I think we're like 50 or 60 from the volcano already. Yeah, we're pretty far from the volcano. The, probably the worst part of the tragedy is that the scientists told the government that it was maybe going to happen soon, but the government didn't really want to take responsibility to move all, to move all the people out. So 20,000 people died. Yeah, in this town, 1985. In November, on November 13th, 1985. On the other side of the volcano, through a different river, uh, 3,000 more people died. So at least 23,000 people died. It was the fourth deadliest volcanic event since 1500. We did go to, the, to a talk um, with a man who lived tw uh, 12 kilometers from here, who lived through the whole thing. He was a child whenever it happened. Even though a lot of other countries sent money for the Colombians to get rehomed, a lot of the government took the money, so they didn't really get support. So here, there's this huge rock we've seen is one of the sites, but the main thing here is the tomb of Omira. Omira was a 12 year old girl who was trapped under rubble. She was trapped under rubble and the media was able to talk to her before she died. She was alive for three days, unable to sleep or move or be taken out of the rubble and she finally passed away. She was so sad. She looked like she hadn't slept and, and she wasn't able to talk to people and give them hugs and everything but... It was a really powerful sight to see that tomb there. A lot of locals were lamenting and reminiscing about the day. You can see here that there's this other whole side to volcanoes, which is really gnarly. The rivers actually carry the lahar down because we did go to another place in Guatemala that the town was wiped out by, uh, by the lahar. Yeah, I remember that bridge was taken out there too. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this is just insane that all of this was a city. This was the biggest city in the area. You know, the this land here is really fertile, the volcanic soil. Yeah. And they were the number one cotton producing town in all of Colombia. Some really powerful things in this, in this park. I'm pretty glad that they just let it get taken over by nature because there's also a lot of memorials that families left here for their lost loved ones. Yeah, so. That's wild to see so many different angles of this volcano and this part of Colombia. It's been really amazing. You can see here some of the buildings that were destroyed and they were two stories. So most of the bottom floor got covered up and you know, we got a nice modern road here, but this was the main road through the city. And this was the hospital here. And you can see how much material filled up this area in here, just covered by the debris flow of the volcano. gosh when you walk in here you just get this scary scary feeling so one more thing that the guide told us about was the people that lived here there were two big markets in this town there was a beautiful church a beautiful square a lot of fields for soccer and a lot of gyms, stuff like that. So it was just a beautiful town and 
I'm really sorry to end this video here. You have to see and remember the people that lived here. Try and do better as we go forward. Thanks you guys so much for coming with us on this beautiful journey around the volcano. Please subscribe to my channel. It's free for you and would help me out a lot. And we'll see you next time.